Wouldn't you love to have a parallax effect with Elemental? Well, I'm going to show you how you can have a stroke effect with lettering. You can see that the person of interest there flows behind the wording and we get a stroke effect when it overlaps. But also we got a text and a button. Now, I will stress, if you try and do this using the methods that a lot of you probably already know about, like absolute positioning and Z-index, the minute you add a text editor or a button or any other widget, underneath the headline where you're doing the stroke effect, you will come unstuck. You must watch this because I will cover the problem and how you get around that really easily. Okay, so let's get started. Now remember, I am going to create it and then I'm going to undo it because we are going to find a problem that a lot of people haven't mentioned in previous videos. And I'm going to show you how to get around it really, really easily. What we're going to do over here is I have a page with a full page container just so it helps us when we're scrolling. And above that, I'm going to add in another container. And by the way, you can do this with section and columns as well. I'm just using the Flexbox container inside Elemental. In Inside of this container, I'm going to drop in, in fact, we'll set the height of this to be about uh, 600 pixels in height. Um, boxed width will go with about a thousand, something like that. And I'm just going to give this a background image. So we're going to go to background type and I'm going to pick this image here. It is a WebP image. It's 1920 by 1080, but it's only 15 kilobytes because I've put it through bulk resizephotos.com, which I strongly recommend you all do. Let's just set it to be uh, center center and we're going to go for a no, we're going to go for a fixed. So we have a bit of a parallax effect, no repeat. And we're going to just say cover pretty simple so far. Now, into this container, we're going to drop in some items. Uh, so we're going to pop in a heading like that. And I, no, we'll do the heading first. And when I'll do the text editor. So I've set it to Family Vedana font REM11 and it's a uppercase transformation. And that is all we're going to do to it. Okay, that's all we're going to do. What I will now, though, is go back to my container, justify the content to be in the center, and I'm going to hit the start. You don't have to hit start. I'm just doing it so you get into good practice. Now, I am going to undo what I've done here later on, but I just want to show you what we could be doing if you were using text stroke effect. Now, if I wanted to convert this header to be a text stroke, the easiest thing to do would be to just say, right, make it be completely transparent or no color at all. Go to text stroke. I might give it a value of one and I go, oh, okay, let's just go for white. I don't know, something like that, right? I could even change the thickness of this to be a two. It's entirely up to you what you do here, okay? I am going to undo everything I did there. Let me now go into my container and drop in a image below the header. We'll pick this image over here. So uh, this is a transparent background, by the way. I'm going to set it to be full resolution. I'm going to go over to the advanced tab for the image. OK, you could mess around with your positioning, but it's a um, sorry. You could mess around with your Z indexing. So you have the overlap, but I'm going to keep it pretty simple here. And I'm going to go for an absolute. As soon as I do that, I'm now within the realms of my 600 pixel height. Let me undo that again. By doing that, you got a header and the big image. Well, now you're no longer the 600 pixel height unless you go and change the height of your image or anything like that. So let's just set this back to be absolute. This is going to be in relation to the container. If you do fixed, it would be that size and visible throughout your screen, no matter where you are. By doing absolute, it will be in this position, but only for this particular container. I'm now going to say move it over to be on the right and also set it to be the bottom. Now we can clearly see this image is way too big. I'm just going to check it on full screen. I'm going to go with 700. I think that's pretty much OK. But you can now see that the word is behind her. That's OK. I don't mind that, but I want to now see the rest of the word beauty. I can't see it. I now want to have this text stroke effect appear. So just stay with me on this, okay? Let's first set some things into motion. The first thing I'm going to do is ensure that this heading has a Z index of one, a Z index of one. I'm now going to go over to my image and ensure that this has a Z index of two. I could, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. And that's kind of what it's doing anyway. The image is in front of the heading. So why have I bothered to put the values in? Because we're now going to repeat the heading and stick it in front of the image. So I'm going to duplicate this. 
and I'm going to move this heading to just sit outside of the image. Now, can you see what's going on at the moment? At the moment, we've got two headings. Stay with me on this, okay? Stay with me. The second heading, I'm going to go into it and ensure that has a Z index of three. That is now in front of the image, okay? We're now going to change the style of this. Let's go to the typography, sorry, the color. Let's make it be fully transparent. And I'm now going to do with a stroke effect of two, and I'm going to stick it as a white like that. This is all good and well, but they're not overlapping properly. Now, this is what a lot of people will tell you to do. And I'm now going to tell you there's a problem with this if you want to go a stage further. But what I'm doing right now, you could do, but Later on, you're going to see, I'm going to say, don't do this. So let's go to the advanced tab, okay? The image is a um, an absolute. The headline is not. So I'm going to go to the position for the headline number one, and I'm going to make it be absolute, right? And it's now kind of gone all the way up there. I'm now going to position it to where I want it to be on the screen. So I'm going to say, give me about 50 from the left, and give me about, uh, let's go with 200. Let's just go with 200, okay? 50, 200. Remember those values. Now we go to heading number two. Let's go to the advanced tab. Again, make the position be absolute. I'm now going to go down here and say offset by 50. And I think you know where I'm going with this for the vertical. Give me 200, right? Okay, look at that. I mean, the background is moving, by the way, because it's a fixed background. You can see the background there but we're not getting much of a parallax effect at the moment. But what we do now have is the outline appearing, even though the wording is behind her. That is how you would do it with a simple parallax stroke effect. But we are gonna go a stage further. I just wanna add a bit of movement to the, the person of interest, okay? Go to advanced, go to motion effect. We're gonna add in a scrolling effect to the image. Advanced motion effect, scrolling effect, and we're going to do a horizontal scroll. And I'm going to say go towards the right, and we'll set it as a four. We'll leave it as a four, but added in some letter spacing of 10 pixels or whatever it was. So now we get a nice bit more of the word overlapping her. So that's pretty, pretty good. And you're going to be looking and go, this is amazing. Job done. I don't need to worry anymore. Yes, if you're only going to have uh, a singular headline, even though it's duplicated, and an image with a bit of overlap, this could work for you really, really well. However, let me show you the problem you're now going to get. Let me now go over to my uh, navigator, and I'm now going to say, well, I want to add in a subheader, maybe another text editor or something like that. Um, First thing you're going to have to do, obviously, is modify how the let wording sits and make sure, you know, you've done your alignment in terms of padding or anything like that. Sort all of that out. That's the first thing you could do. Now, I've added in a button and I've made that text editor a bigger font, white, and I've given it a Z index of four. So it's now in front of the image as well. And looking at that, you're going to think and go, yeah, it's all fine. It's moving. You know, the stroke effect is working. But watch what happens now if you were to go and shrink the screen. Now, now pay attention to this as I shrink it down. Ignore the fact that the header doesn't change size because I haven't set that for the mobile size or tablet or anything like that. But look at the text below. Look at the spacing of that. Now watch what happens when you start to shrink down. Things start to misalign. And this is one of the drawbacks to where you have some elements within uh, your container or your section which are absolute and other ones are not absolute. Now, you might turn around and go, well, OK, it's a pretty simple, easy problem. Just go over to your uh, normal page and set your text editor to be absolute. Well, OK, let's do that then. Let me just go over here. Let me get rid of anything we've got here with the left and the right and all of that, OK, in terms of how I had marginalized it. Let's go and set that that text to be absolute. Now I'm going to set the offset over the uh, horizontal to be 150. And I'll tell you what, we know that the text was about 200. So let's go with uh, 400. So everything in here now is absolute positioning. The header, the other header, the text and the button. Now watch this. Look what's happening to the button now. The text is completely overlapping on the button. Absolute is not your friend in these circumstances. So how can I add text and button and get things to adjust without getting onto this problem? Well, what we're going to do is we are now going to undo a whole load of stuff that I did. So first thing, I'm going to go to my header. 
the very first header, okay? And I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to ensure that this is now set to default. Number one, the image we will leave as absolute because I don't need to worry about that. That's always going to be moving and whatever in the background. The second header, I'm going to go in and make that be default as well. Let's now go to the text editor. Let's make that be default. And I'll tell you what, let's now do the button as well and make that be default. Everything is standard default, okay? I'm also gonna undo any funky margins and stuff I might have done on any of the items which I had, and it was just a text editor and the button I was messing around. So we currently have this problem at the moment. I am now going to get another container and I'm gonna drop a container into the primary container. So this is the primary container. I'm now going to just draw it. doesn't matter where I drop it. You know, I can drop it anywhere I want. I'm just going to drop it in. I don't know. Uh, let's just drop it in over here. So we now have another container within the primary container. I'm just going to move it for simplicity to be below the button. We have text, we have image, we have heading, text and button. The stroke effect heading, I am now going to move that into the new container. So this sits inside the new container. I'm now going to go over to my parent container. It is a box width of 1000. For simplicity, I'm going to just zero everything out there. The height of it is 600. Now I go to my second container, the child. I'm going to make sure the box width for that is also 1000. I'm going to zero everything out and I'm going to ensure the height of that is also 600. And also ensure that you replicate any other container settings. So I'm going to ensure it is on the center and it is to the start as well. Now it's not in line. Again, please don't worry about that. Okay, because this is how it exactly was. Now, do you remember right at the start or near the start, I said I am going to undo the justify content. So now I'm going to set the child container to be at the top. I wanted to show you replicate and now I want to undo it. Now go back to your primary container and again, set that one to be at the top. Look at that. Now they are both on matching. Do you get me? They are both on matching. Um, in fact, I am going to, uh, I mean, one thing I don't like, though, is how your text and your button aren't completely in line. So for simplicity, I'm just going to go to my heading. OK, and I'm just going to move this to be to the left by about, we'll go over about 17. For the second header, I'm going to do the same as well over here. Just go with uh, 17 as well, just so they're completely in line. OK, so remember, both containers start at the top. They are banging in line, but I don't want the word beauty to be right up there. Okay, don't worry. I'm going to go to my container. I'm going to go to my advanced tab. 200 padding, say, from the top. And how about give me about 60 from the bottom. You will adjust your height and all of that, all right? Work it out. 200 from the top, like that. Let me now go to the child container. Let's go to advanced. We're going to go 200 and I might as well put 60 there as well. Can you see what we've done? By just adding in another container, which is overlapping, look what I've got going on here. The Z index that I set for my stroke effect and all of that, they are still in motion. So even so, if I had said that the text stroke was a Z index of one, even though it sits in a new container, it would still follow the laws of logic. So let me shrink down the screen. And by the way, I've adjusted the headline. You'll notice a jump. Ignore that because I've just made it a really smaller font. But look, now the text is not jumping up and meeting the heading. So any sizes we've set for the distances between the three elements there does follow suit. You would have adjusted your sizes differently, right, for your desktop, your tablet, your mobile, font clamp, responsive. We did a video on that. But look, we get it, it basically works. And if you try and do absolute positioning and you don't then think about this neat little trick that I've done, you will come unstuck. And by the way, onto the button, I'm just going to add in a bit of a motion effect, scrolling effect. We'll have a vertical one. And I'm going to say that as you scroll down, the button moves uh, downwards. We'll do that. We'll set it as a four. We can see now here it's kind of hitting and touching the text at the moment when you're right at the top of the screen. So I'm just going to go to the layout and I'm going to say give me about 70 pixels there. Go back to the parent container, 160. And for the child container, I'm going to set that to be... Uh, 160 as well like that. Now when we scroll down, she moves over to the right, okay, 
Uh, you get the stroke effect with the lettering. You can you can make it more dramatic. You could have a whole sentence there, right? The button is scrolling down. So it's almost like it stays in your viewpoint, that call to action, until you get there and it disappears behind. If you find your button is appearing over your section, well, that's pretty easy. Just make sure that uh, your second container, which is this one over here, you could just give it like a Z index of 99 or even go 99999. It's up to you what you want to go for. I just went for 99, so it sticks in front. And one other little tip as well is in your primary container, Go to your layout. I should have mentioned this at the start. Go to additional options and set your overflow to be hidden. Otherwise, it does get picked up by page speed performance. Um, it's just something I feel like um, isn't spoken about enough with the absolute positioning when you want to have that parallax or that stroke effect. But when you add in more content, you come unstuck a little bit. But by adding in another container and you replicate the dimensions and the positioning of it, okay, you make the second container absolute. The first one is not absolute. You can now have things layered on top. And it doesn't matter that the second container only has a heading because here there is nothing above the heading. So there's nothing to push it down. We're controlling its position by using the padding of the container. I hope that makes sense. I'm Imran Web Squadron. Like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life. Have no shame, there's no time. Feel the pain, let the grind. I could change in my mind. Pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win it life. I never miss that fact. Taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back. Put me in the ring.